Hi, my name is Aiden. In this screencast we'll take a look at Aurelia validation. Last week we did AngularJS 2 forms uh, and in my opinion it was kind of cumbersome to get it up and running and do a simple validation on one simple field. So hopefully Aurelia will be a lot simpler. Uh, I actually did the screencast just a couple of minutes ago, <laughs> but I noticed that uh, once I tried to edit the video, I noticed that the screen was stuck at the first image I just uh, I, sh I showed. So uh, I only done this once, but uh, before this, I haven't used Aurelia validation at all. Uh, I just uh, came here so, uh, into the Aurelia validation GitHub repo and follow followed the documentation there and uh, it was quite easy to get it up and running so uh, I'm just gonna repeat a couple of steps that I just did uh, to install Aurelia uh, you just uh, use the simple command jspm install Aurelia validation as I said I already done this uh, So this should shouldn't make any difference now, since I just did this a couple of minutes ago. And uh, another thing I needed to do was to go ahead and find this Aurelia validation TypeScript definition file. Uh, and I just googled uh, Aurelia validation TypeScript and uh, I found a repo from the guy that's offered the, the Aurelia framework. So you can't find this in you can't find it in definitely typed, but uh, if you Google it, you'll get another hit. Uh, so uh, once we've installed Aurelia Aurelia validation module, we're gonna need to provide a configuration file for the startup of Aurelia. So we're gonna name it main. And I already have, and I've already created a main.ts file, so this will go ahead and look for main.js, which will be transpiled from this transcript file. I'm gonna go ahead and import the Radio framework, and then if we switch over here to the documentation page, uh, we can see here that we just gave it a configuration file. And then we're gonna copy paste the code that we're gonna need in main.js. Since we're using TypeScript, I can I can type this. So now we'll see we have a statement completion here. Uh, we can see here that if I hadn't copy paste this, we could easily figure out what to use here. Uh, so uh, we're gonna use standard configuration, development logging and then we're gonna bootstrap the application. So basically we haven't done anything differently now. So if we, if we were to refresh this page, we're just using our custom configuration file. Uh, and looks like we have an error. Aurelia Bootstrapper. Right, so let's see here. So, let's see if we are compiling our main.ts. We have main.js. So, the file hasn't compiled for some reason. Uh, I'm gonna write. So, I just touched this window and now it compiled for us. So we had uh, some lag here. Uh, so we have, if you split this file side by side, for some reason this TypeScript file here didn't transpile to this JavaScript right there. So hopefully just if we refresh the page now, everything should run. Right, so we're just using our custom configuration file and what we want to do here, what we want to accomplish is that we want, you don't want to be able to enter empty to-do items here. So we want to validate this field. And to do that we're going to need to load the validation uh, module. Let's see that we don't have any errors. 
once we load the module. So we notice here we're loading the pl plugin Aurelia validation module and everything seems, seems to be working. So now we just need to hook up our validation. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to import the validation module here and we're going to give it a static func static function here to inject validation into our constructor. Once again I'm going to take advantage of TypeScript here. So we're going to expose something called validation. I'm just going to type it and we're going to build it here by passing in by calling validation on this. Let's just copy paste this and we'll take a look at what it means. So we're injecting the validation uh, builder here and we are ensuring that the new to the text should not be empty, should have a min length of three and let's say no longer than 50 characters. Uh, so now we've configured our validation and we're gonna need to trigger it as trigger it as well. And we simply trigger the validation by calling the valid valid method when the form is submitted. Uh, and we're gonna call this method add to do when the form is submitted. And if it's successfully valid, validated, then we're gonna push it to the to do items uh, array. Uh, otherwise, we could go ahead and display some nice error message here. But for now, we'll just log it. Validation errors. Right, so now we're gonna need to do a couple of things in our app.html. So first of all, this will this will need to be a form. We take a look at our documentation page. We're gonna delegate submit to call add to do. We're gonna bind to the attribute validate uh, to a property called validation on our class, which was this guy right here. That's why I exposed that one on the class. So we also we can also go ahead and get rid of this done typing trigger event, since when we press enter, that will actually submit our form for us. So we can clean up this code right here and uh, this button here is will not trigger on click this will submit the form instead let's move this out of here just to be clear and this is our form tag finishing here uh, so one thing I noticed uh, when I recorded the screencast uh, uh, a couple of minutes ago was that the default configuration for Aurelia validation uh, is built uh, to use uh, Twitter bootstrap so it, it expects us to have uh, a div here uh, with a form group otherwise we'll get an error uh, so this is the default behavior and this and you can uh, reconfigure this if you want to but if you uh, look at the documentation here we can see that the custom attribute uses strategy based on Twitter bootstrap by default so uh, yeah and we're also going to want to provide style here for it to look good so let's have a label here like a new to do 
I will have the style in line here for now. All right. So if I if I hadn't uh, wrapped this in a form group, we got some errors since we expect uh, expect us they expect us to use Twitter Bootstrap by default. Uh, so I don't, I don't know what I feel about that. Uh, like you are not married to it, but uh, they could easily uh, left out the Twitter Bootstrap default implementation, in my opinion. Uh, but anyways, we'll see that this will actually give us some nice validations without actually needing to do anything. All right, so we're calling add to do, and if it validates, we're gonna add it to our items list. And I think this should basically be it. So if we refresh the page now, we can see here that our label shows new to do. If we type just one letter, it needs to be at least three characters long. So now it's triggering the validation uh, immediately. Uh, I know. Yeah, I don't think it should actually trigger by default unless we try to submit the form once. That that is probably doable. If we type something that's too long, we get an error message. If we leave it empty, it will tell us that it's required. So we can't press enter here. We see that we are logging validation errors. So we're actually hitting uh, this chain chained catch method right now. And if we type something that is valid, uh, this is valid, it adds, adds it to our to-do list. Uh, so quite easy to get validation up and running and probably a bit more work to uh, customize it uh, according to your needs. Right, then we could do one more thing. Uh, let's see here. We can easily bind, we can disable the submit button unless the form is uh, valid. So that's pretty nice. Just add that and demo it. So now we can see that the submit button is disabled unless the form is valid. Uh, so uh, that is a rate of validation for you. And if it went a bit quick here, it's because I'm in a bit of a hurry. I, I'm gonna play a round of, a round of golf in a, in an hour or so. <laughs> uh, but as I said, I just did this uh, like 15 minutes ago, and I haven't used a Rayleigh validation at all before that. Uh, so I did the screencast once, and I noticed that the screen wasn't recording, and now I just did it again. And it is, as you can see, it was quite easy to learn and get up and running, especially once you've done it once already. So uh, if you guys have any questions, post them uh, in the comment section. And if you haven't seen the previous video, uh, I'm going to link them in the description here as well. And until next time, have a nice guys. <laughs> have a nice day, guys.